Do you see gaps in between these three levels? And how can an organization like yours address uh, those existing gaps between uh, national, mainly European, um, um, regulatory perspectives and the interests of patients? Well, one uh, of uh, the uh, main characteristic of uh, the uh, patient organization in cancer is that the way how uh, uh, patients react to cancer is uh, to get uh, stronger uh, because of the disease and try once uh, they are out to help other people. So this uh, kind of different way for other uh, uh, for other uh, diseases, because cancer is really something that changes the life, and in fact, it changed my life when in '97 I got the colon cancer. So for me, it was really a, a very uh, specific, a peculiar experience. Because uh, a medical doctor, but I've been teaching biochemistry in the university, and then I've been doing uh, politics, and uh, uh, then uh, I became more and more interested into the uh, into the problem of cancer from uh, not only from the research point of view but also from uh, the other part. Once you became patient you understand uh, what are the needs and I understood that one of the needs was uh, to be informed and uh, mm -hmm. I started uh, to, uh, uh, to get my organization in Italy just doing a booklet uh, and giving information to cancer patients because uh, that is the most important thing, especially now that there is a consensus in information and consensus, so people, patients have to know about this. But once I start to do this, I understand that uh, for cancer now it's a completely different situation because now uh, a cancer patient have new needs and you have to answer with new rights. And then uh, in Italy I got a very strong experience knowing a lot of politicians and I succeeded to get approved the, uh, few law for recognition of disability during chemotherapy in uh, two months. And then I succeeded to get uh, a law for cancer patients uh, uh, to uh, allow them to go from full-time to part-time job. And uh, I, was, I succeeded also uh, against uh, your colleague Pani uh, to get approved the law in the parliament uh, to establish that the reimbursement has to be given within 100 days. And, uh, he tried to fight this law, but he hasn't uh, succeeded to cancel it. Uh, also, if I'm fighting with him, because he's not respecting the law, but the law, once approved, have to be respected. So then, having such an experience, I thought that it was worthwhile to look at Europe. And uh, uh, I was one of the founders of the European Cancer Patient Coalition in 2003, and then uh, I uh, realized that to do more also for my country, I had to get more involved in the European Parliament. So then ECPC is a particular umbrella organization because there's 350 organizations. We are taking care of all cancer patients and uh, uh, we are doing research and uh, we are working a lot with the scientific society. Uh, we have been uh, 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 several projects funded and uh, uh, we are doing a lot of research. So part of our incomes from research project, but we are doing also uh, a, a lot of work within the uh, European Commission. And we succeeded to, to get, uh, by Commissioner Borg, uh, made a commission of uh, cancer expert, and European cancer patient is there. So as you can see, uh, we were doing a lot of work and now we are very strongly linked to the European Parliament. Uh, and uh, just recently we had a, a, a document uh, that we presented in the Cancer World Wide Day and it was supported by 116 uh, maps. So then Bouchot is one of uh, our good friends, he's always uh, closer to us. But what is the main problem, and uh, I want to go through uh, all the things that we are doing, but I like to say a few words about disparities. I think that we live in the Europe of disparities and not in the Europe of the rights, especially for patients. And now we can, uh, uh, we can fight and uh, we can uh, get something more done because uh, people don't understand yet uh, the political value of the cross-border healthcare. And that is the beginning of uh, something 
bigger to build for patients from all over Europe, specifically starting from rare disease, because for rare disease can be built something based also some, uh, some funds that will be given to start. And to fight the disparities, we have to know how things are going in Europe. And one, uh, my slide is the only one, it's showing what the disparities in registration of innovative drugs. Mm -hmm. You can see that uh, you know, we are talking from uh, 12 months up to 10 years, uh, more than 10 years. There are countries that, uh, uh, at, for a, a very, very common innovative drug, uh, you can see how Europe is. So then uh, we know that we are living in a very tremendous uh, uh, condition, that uh, after tens of years that we were asking science to give answer to cure cancer, now we can cure cancer, we can chronicize, and we cannot have access to these drugs. Okay, so the, one of the big problems is reimbursing uh, uh, problem. And we understand that each country has to decide the price. No problem about that. But are you asking uh, why there are so many different uh, pricing all over Europe? Are you trying to understand if really people, politicians and so on, know how important it is to get an evaluation of cost benefits? We, as patients, are very careful for sustainability because we think that it's very important and we are working also to reduce the number of people that get sick by improving screening because if we reduce the expenses then, but we are very worried about giving to each European citizen the right to have access to innovative medicine. So what we think is that now is time to change the directive of the AMA. And we are working for this. So we have a resolution, and uh, uh, we uh, were talking with the commissioner. And since now, the European Parliament is uh, looking uh, to some changes in the MA. I, talk with, uh, I spoke with the president of the LB Committee, La Via. And uh, we are preparing a resolution. And, and in the document that we were uh, just presenting on February 4th, in which 116 uh, MAPs were supporting us, we are asking to get the opportunity to have a European evaluation of health technology assessment. So this has to be done. Because I know that in Italy, they don't do really health technology. Each country can do, and each country cannot be the Europe of disparities. We need to have a change of the directive to allow, not IMA as it is now, but opening IMA to the HTA uh, uh, evaluation and together mm -hmm. in a parallel way to do a, just an HTA evaluation. Because otherwise, never patients will allow to the, most, the more and more expensive drugs. Because we, we know that now there will come in several immunological drugs for lung. And it's much different from melanoma, because melanoma are few people. Like, what, what these people, they can see that they can be cured, but they cannot allow. So the only thing is to have a, a European evaluation at EMA level, but having outside expert of health technology assessment to give in parallel, while they are registering the drug, giving the evaluation. And EMA is starting to do, because uh, as you know, for adaptive licensing, uh, uh, the EMA is doing this work. And this bet is just the one that we want to win. Because afterwards, each country, uh, uh, reimbursement agency, can have a reference, and then uh, they might adapt that reference. But this is a starting point to reduce disparities. Also, I have a, um, a couple of questions to, to none of you in particular, uh, so uh, essentially addressing all the panelists. Um, one is, we've heard in previous panels um, how technological changes, and Mario Savo also addressed this, that we're living through a paradigm shift where uh, um, the relationship becomes far more personalized, um, uh, the, the targeting of specific individuals, is that a threat to, to the general nature of patient associations? Is that a tool that you can use? Or is that a, just a complicating factor, but ultimately not a, a major impact? And my second question, not directly related to this, is going back to this dichotomy 
of role between European level uh, and EMA and the national agencies. Um, how do you see the role of the patient associations in shaping that dialogue, national European, and also the um, addressing what Mr. De Lorenzo was mentioning, considering the economic access and sophistication of system um, differentials between EU member states and how, how to take that into consideration. Thank you. I tell you a couple of things concerning uh, the uh, relationship between uh, agency and uh, patients organization. I think that the EMA model could work very well because uh, a single organization cannot be uh, representative of the whole disease. So now, more and more, there are umbrella organizations, and um, those are the only one that are uh, admitted to the EMA uh, uh, work, uh, uh, working group. And they give a lot of work to be done. Uh, just all uh, the indications for patients are, are just uh, re rewritten by us. So, uh, just a question of clarification. When you say umbrella organization, meaning involving many member states or across the board in terms of pathology well, and I, area? No, I, umbrella organization in Europe, I mean, I'm talking about several organizations from each country okay. of uh, Europe. Uh, and the same should be also at uh, uh, national level, because uh, who is representing cancer people? I mean, uh, uh, it's also very difficult for them uh, who to call. And that was the reason why in two or three we made the, the, uh, the Federation of Italian Cancer We have 550. So then we have a lot of power because we go in the parliament and we are talking with one voice. But the minister told me that you, if you come and then I have to, uh, to ask to many others. So that must be the criteria. It would be nice if uh, the, uh, the uh, member state state agency would uh, apply the same system of EMA because that works very well and keeps uh, also easier for them uh, to uh, interact and uh, I, uh, I appreciate very much what you are doing here. What, that's what I was asking to Pani but Pani is uh, really very afraid of uh, getting but I'm giving him problems because uh, at political level uh, I mean there is a law that we got approved. Uh, just uh, to get uh, a table of coordination between problems between regions, and he doesn't uh, uh, get this table working, because he said, in this way, you accept that each region is uh, by himself. Yes, but we have it politically. We don't want, look, the question, the very delicate question is the following. We, as a cancer patient organization, we don't want to get inside the judgment of scientific and technical problem. That's not our job. Our job is more concerning the way of access, the way of adverse event, the way, but never get, get inside, because that is not our business. We can say how the clinical trial should be given, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be, uh, ask uh, to give uh, my uh, suggestion if a drug is okay or not, because it's not our business. The, uh, the other thing that I would like uh, to say is transparency. So I, I have to tell you that the first thing when Vlad became uh, a treasurer, we established a way that we give to everybody the key to come inside in our website and every day, change by change, are known the expenses that are done. So that's, it's open to everybody. And this is the only way to make sure that uh, you can really do the, uh, the right job. And I tell you, uh, pharma don't like our idea to have uh, a, a, a health uh, a technology assessment at European level, because each one of them like to, to get in touch with each country. And uh, they are asking the reimbursement of price after they get high price in another country. We established in the law of the 100 days that if the pharma company wants to go to that process, then they have to present within 30 days, not waiting for us. So that's the problem. And they don't appreciate this. They were very upset when we, but we don't care. We, we have to go ahead on our way. And I still feel that, and I'd say the last thing, we as a patient don't agree to give a drug for living two or three months longer with, in a very bad quality of life. These survivors are not 
supported by us. And I wonder how many, how many money are spending for this kind of, we, we don't like this. We tell to, we are very worried about a melanoma guy that can have three or four years remission, but we don't care about two or three months longer life. That is not busy. And if you do this at European level, get together the experience of the experience of NICE and so on, but bringing them within EMA, not leaving it to the present knowledge of EMA, they're bringing within EMA this experience so that at least there is a, a kind of European, you can call also in any, in any other case, if, if you don't want, like EMA, call in another thing, but then a, a, a European Agency for Evaluation of h -Tech, uh, together with EMA have to get together because EMA knows what is the efficacy of a drug and then they can discuss it. This is our, our position, but I think it's the right one.